Hello everyone. As India is celebrating its Republic Day, ADU from its European Bureau at Cyprus is all set to brainstorm India-Cyprus relations, which have a major role to play in India's Mediterranean policy. And it is an extreme honor to have with us the Honorable High Commissioner of India at Cyprus, Ms. Madhumita Hazarika Bhagat, to discuss these warm and strong ties between the two nations. A career diplomat who joined the Indian Foreign Service in 1999 has been in her current assignment since November 2019. And in her leadership, the Indo-Cyprus ties have seen a positive stride and the Indian community in Cyprus a binding force. Ma'am, I welcome you to ADU's chat room to a discussion which actually promises to be enlightening, absorbing and an insight into the growing Indo-Cyprus ties. Namaskar to all the viewers of the channel and uh, I would like to first of all give my best wishes for a healthy, safe and a very prosperous new year. Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you so much for your time for ADU and a very happy Republic Day which we are going to celebrate tomorrow. It's the 73rd Republic Day and all of us as expats here feel very proud to be celebrating here in Cyprus. So we begin with the interview with the first question to you ma'am. How important is Cyprus in India's Mediterranean policy? No one else better than you will tell us about it. Well, I would like to begin by saying that India and Cyprus share very, very, very time-tested and excellent relations, whether they are political, economic, cultural, or people-to-people -people contacts. So I would feel that in all respects, in the Mediterranean, Cyprus has a very important place for us. But specifically, given what Cyprus is and what the conditions are in Cyprus, its strategic position in the Eastern Mediterranean, we feel that for India, Cyprus is a, one of the most important countries in the Eastern Mediterranean and uh, we definitely look towards having more cooperation and having more strategic thought and uh, cooperation in this regard. Great ma'am. So the embassies for various nations have a big role to play in developing the MSMEs partnerships mm -hmm. between India and the various nations where we have our embassies. How have you been able to create this trade bond between India and Cyprus? I'm very happy that you raised this question because the MSMEs are a very important area which both the Republic of Cyprus and India are uh, as economies are focusing on. So therefore our cooperation, our economic cooperation, our trade cooperation is very much uh, aligned to that sector and we had actually recently uh, interaction between the uh, let's say the DG or the head of uh, our uh, Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry on issues which relates to having a more intense cooperation between the MSMEs in both the countries. I think this is an area which requires a lot of uh, it has a lot of potential and I believe that uh, we can really work towards it whether uh, it is in any sector there are various sectors where the MSMEs are, uh, you know, present and I think over the board in the dealing with our economic relations, it is a very, very important and vital part. That was great, ma'am. Knowing about the MSMEs partnerships between India and Cyprus, yes, it gives us new hopes. So as the Indian High Commissioner to Cyprus, how is the experience of balancing India's relationship in a divided country? Well, uh, I would feel this is one of the most uh, defining issues which have been there in the Republic of Cyprus for now a very, very long time and uh, very unfortunately is something uh, that seems to be uh, raising its head in, a, in not, I would say, not in a very positive way. The, we see that, uh, you know, how there have been intense efforts made by Republic of Cyprus to solve the Cyprus issue, to have the reunification of the island. And uh, I must say, as like I said, as a time-tested and trusted partner of uh, Cyprus, we have been continuously supporting uh, the Republic of Cyprus in all the international forums at the UN, at uh, any other forum which uh, requires our support.
for uh, the view and for the stand of Republic of Cyprus, which is based on UN resolutions and uh, the EU equis. So having said that, I would feel that uh, yes, given the conditions that are there which surround the Cyprus issue, it is indeed uh, in certain ways a challenge uh, to you know uh, move ahead in terms of uh, uh, diplomacy as well as maintaining strategic uh, relations and content. I think given the state of our excellent relations that we have with the Republic of Cyprus, uh, we, we have been able to carry on the process of uh, helping and assisting wherever we can and uh, conducting our relations in a very, very uh, helpful and cooperative manner irrespective of uh, how, you know, whether this is still remains a divided island country. Continuation to that, ma'am, the UN peacekeeping force in Cyprus also has an Indian contingent. Can you tell us something about this Indian presence in Cyprus which has been there for a very long time? Well, I would say that uh, I'm very happy to, you know, also mention here that given the context of our 60 years of establishment of our diplomatic relations, I would say that uh, the UNFCIP, the UN Peacekeeping Forces, have right since its inception had the inclusion of the Indian forces in the, the peacekeeping. And uh, we have had very sterling and uh, let's say one of the best officers who have served here and in keeping with their contribution to the peacekeeping uh, forces here and the kind of uh, phenomenal work that they have done here uh, i would like to mention that uh, general thinamaya who was a part of the very first contingent of the un peacekeeping forces in cyprus he died in harness in the, the republic and in his memory to commemorate his contribution to the UN peacekeeping forces, the Republic of Cyprus has named a memorable uh, street uh, for him. And uh, that is something that I feel is a, a homage paid to uh, how Indian peacekeeping forces have uh, functioned all over the world. And uh, I would like to share with you uh, something that is uh, very important for us. Uh, well, the thing is, is that uh, uh, in September 2015, the, in the Leader Summit in uh, New York on UN peacekeeping, Prime Minister uh, Sri Narendra Modi ji had uh, said that the foundations of the United Nations were laid by the brave soldiers on the battlefields of the Second World War. By 1945, they included 2.5 million men of the Indian Army and the largest volunteer force in the history. So India today is the largest contributor of troops to UN peacekeeping operations all over the world and more than 200,000 troops have served in 49 out of the 71 UN peacekeeping uh, operations deployed so far. So I would say that uh, you know right since the inception of the United Nations Peacekeeping Force in Cyprus. Um, in 1964, our uh, three Indian stalwart uh, officers were posted as the commander, commanders Lieutenant General P. S. Gyani and as I earlier mentioned, General K. S. Thimaya and uh, Major General Devan Premchand. They were some of the first to head the UNFCIP from 1964 to 1976 and thereafter we have had a continuous uh, inclusion of Indian officers in the UNFCIP and as of now we have a serving officer here who is uh, heading the uh, contingent so to say from the Indian side and we in future also will do our best in contributing our uh, forces to the UN peacekeeping forces here. Thank you. That is great to know, ma'am. That is great to know. And I'm sure as an Indian here and in India, we feel very proud that our uh, forces are there with the UN peacekeeping forces in Cyprus and helping in other countries. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, you have been here for a considerable amount of time in Cyprus and you have seen a lot uh, in terms of uh, business, in terms of culture, trade. So which are the potential areas of cooperation 
you see between India and Cyprus in the future? Well, the potential areas of uh, cooperation are all across the spectrum, I would say. Even as the political relations are excellent and I would say in spite of the pandemic, the COVID, we have been able to have in the virtual format a number of meetings which has enhanced our ties, reinforced our uh, close relations. I would say that still in the, in the areas of uh, ICT, in the areas of trade, tourism and pharmaceuticals, you know India is known as the pharmacy of the world and during COVID times we have proved our excellence in terms of vaccinations and uh, medicines. So I would like to say that these are the potential areas where we could really intensify and strengthen our links. And as, uh, as people, I would say the people connect is the most important connect also between the two countries and therefore enhancing cultural ties, uh, getting to know more about uh, the heritage and the culture of each other's countries is something that will be a matter of priority. Great. Uh, about defense ties, about defense ties between India and Cyprus. Since we are a complete defense magazine, this definitely interests mm -hmm. us a lot and a my audience. So, as High Commissioner, would you have any strategic recommendations to the Indian MOD? Well, I can say that uh, along with the uh, rest of our, uh, like the wide areas of uh, cooperation, defense also is one of the most important and uh, strategic area for uh, bilateral ties. And having kept that in mind, we are negotiating an MOU on defense cooperation. I would like to share with you that it is almost in its final uh, stages. And uh, we hope to sign the MOU in near future. Uh, well, at the same time, I would like to say that irrespective of a, a structural uh, framework uh, formalizing the relationship, uh, we have been carrying on the linkages, we have been sharing information as well as experiences and knowledge in the field of defense and uh, previously we have been also participating in defense exercises which have taken place and uh, I think uh, the, what is more important is also uh, intensifying the relations in terms of uh, sharing of visits, delegation visits to each other's countries as well as participating in the defense expositions. So I would feel that overall we are moving towards a more uh, close and a more uh, expanded uh, relationship as far as our defense cooperation goes. We come to now the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So how did the High Commission here in Cyprus, help Indians in Cyprus combat the pandemic, both the ones staying here and the ones stranded here. Well, as you all know that we have been suffering from this pandemic since last two years and uh, naturally, you know, there have been a lot of cases, whether they are here or all over the world, of people in distress, people who have suffered a lot due to this unnatural uh, calamity and uh, therefore you know as a high commission it is a primary duty to help out and to assist as much as possible our citizens our uh, nationals in a foreign country in republic of cyprus i would say that the high commission has been instrumental in helping uh, indians in distress indians who had uh, suffered from various issues uh, because of the pandemic and we have been extending help and support to them in terms of uh, providing them with essentials, providing them with assistance where they required. Some assistance was also uh, which they required in terms of continuing with the present employment and therefore the ease of uh, you know continuing in the uh, on the island and with the government authorities here, with the official authorities who have been very very forthcoming, I would say and also in terms of how they were helped uh, in uh, procuring let's say medicines or in terms of daily needs i think along with a lot of indian associations who have done exemplary work in this field we have been able to uplift most of these people who were in distress 
uh, we also organized and uh, facilitated a repatriation flight. Uh, there were a lot of Indians who wanted to go back to India because of loss of employment and because of uh, the various problems that they were facing here as well as back home. So they wanted to go get back to India. So we uh, organized a flight for them, a repatriation flight for them. So I think uh, above all, we have been able to and we still are helping out all our uh, nationals and all our Indian brethren to, you know, to facilitate whether uh, anybody of them wants to go back to India or come from India back to Cyprus also, uh, we have been able to do so. So I think the High Commission has been and will always stand uh, for the people here. That is really commendable, ma'am. And as far as we are concerned, we are living here in Cyprus, we know there is a good amount of Indians living in Cyprus mm -hmm. who always look onto High Commission for more help. Thank you. Finally, ma'am. Now this year is the 75th anniversary of Indian independence. So how do you see promoting the Indian Cyprus relationships in future? Well, I feel that, you know, we have started, uh, as I have oft repeated this, that we have started uh, the celebration of 75 years of our independence under uh, the tutelage of uh, guidance and tutelage of our Honorable uh, Prime Minister who has termed this as Azadi Ka Amrit Utsav and uh, there are a lot of initiatives and uh, events that have taken place and organized by the High Commission in this regard. Uh, we hope that uh, these events as well as the, these, um, these commemorative uh, activities uh, bring us closer to the people and to Cyprus because this also will spread the message of how both the Republic of Cyprus and Republic of India are very, very close in many ways. Uh, we share the same past and we also in many ways are trying to build uh, a more resilient, a more united and a more developed future. Uh, we would say that uh, all the ACAM activities as well as uh, all the events that we are holding not only highlight the fact that uh, what uh, the freedom movement and how the freedom fighters of India led us towards independence but also to show that how in the 75 years India has uh, charted its part towards uh, strengthening democracy and uh, bringing about uh, development uh, for its people and also has held on to its uh, values, its uh, commitment to their friendships all over the world and uh, as we hold true to the fact that Vasudevai Kutumbakam, that world is one family, I think uh, Akam and our celebrations for 75 years of independence will reinforce uh, this value of ours. Great, thank you so much ma'am. Your progressive views and the future that you are dreaming for India and Cyprus relations are very intriguing and very interesting. I'm sure this is going to interest our audience and know more about this country and the relations with India. Thank you so much. Jai Hind ma'am. Thank and you. And a very happy 73rd Republic. Namaskar. Jai Hind and wishing you all the very best for the 73rd Republic Day of India.